A mid-autumn wind caused dry and brittle leaves to tumble along the ground, landing at the base of the Ponyville Library. Growing close to the middle of the town, the library itself was actually in the middle of a hollowed out tree, which through the grace of magic was still alive and growing. At this time of year, leaves of brown and orange replaced the normal ver verdant canopy. Inside the library was homely but spacious. Bookshelves had been carved into the living wood walls. The main, the main area was for books and patrons to read or check out materials. Off to one side was a small kitchen, and in the back, up a few steps, was dining, was dining, come, dining, come reading area. Upstairs was set aside for the librarian's living quarters. It taught, it too was equally, fuck the beer, fix that. It too was equally spacious, including a second bathroom and a few rooms for librarian and guests. Off some of these rooms were balconies that gave a commanding view of town and the surrounding out countryside. <laughs> Purple scales blanketed almost every surface of the library. Spike, a baby dragon of 18 years, rushed, th rushed around the library with a broom, trying to clean up the scales that continued to drop from him. Normally, the little dragon was covered from his round head to pointed tail with purple scales. Today, however, was not normal. His scales were falling off him like the fall leaves outside. Not even the smaller, light green scales that covered his underside or the emerald green vertical scales going down his back were spared. With how many scales he'd been losing, he felt exposed and it was seriously considering getting Rarity to make him some pants until his new scales came in. Upstairs, his guardian Twilight Sparkle was sleeping peacefully with one such purple scale <laughs> purple scale perched precariously on her nose, teetering back and forth as she breathed. The unicorn in question had been sleeping most of the day due to contracting a bad case of pony pox. Coughing in her sleep, the scale on her nose tipped into her mouth, waking her suddenly. Spitting the scale out, she called for number one assistant. Spike! The young dragon ran to the Twilight's room, dropping scales left and right as he went. Yes, Twilight? Is there something I can get for you? He asked, worried for his friend. The Twilight was shocked at Spike's appearance, except for a few patches, patched here and there. Almost all of Spike's scales had fallen out. Spike, what happened to you? She asked, concerned. Are you okay? I'm fine. Flesh, I said, I'm going through a growth spurt, and even though it looks bad now, my scales will grow back in a week or two. Spike was excited. I can't wait till my new scales come in. As soon as they do, I'm going to run over and show Rarity. I'm sure Rarity will find them quite attractive, Twilight said between coughs. Spike became aware of Twilight's disheveled appearance. Any other day, the unicorn pony had a tidy, well-brushed purple mane and a tail with a, with a violet and purple stripe running through them. But now they were both considerably unkept, unkempt. There were bags under her eyes, and were us her usual vibrant lavender coat was covered in little white spots. Even a star-shaped cue mark graced her fl flank, gracing her flanks, was duller than normal. Since you're up, do you feel like eating? Any uh, since you're up, do you feel like eating anything? Spike asked her. Can I get you a glass of apple juice or maybe some alfalfa pancakes? Thanks, Spike. Maybe later. My stomach still feels a little queasy. She thanked him. I can't sleep right now. Could you give me give me my copy of Ponies in Underland? It's one of my favorites, she asked. Sure thing, Twilight. Spike scanned the bookshelves until he found a title on the third shelf. A uh, little help? Of course. Twilight tried to concentrate, a, concentrate on lifting the young dragon to the shelf with her magic, but nothing was happening. I'm sorry, Spike. With this headache, I can't seem to concentrate. Uh, that's okay. I'll see if I can climb up there. I wish we still had the ladder. Too bad it won't be back from the carpenter until tomorrow, Spike said. No, Spike. I, I don't want you to risk, to risk you falling and getting hurt on my account. She thought for a moment, then came up with a solution. I've got an idea. If you come over here, I can try to swing you up to the bookshelf. Up to the bookshelf, then you can jump down onto the bed safe and sound. Sounds like a plan to me, Twilight. Twilight used her mouth to grab Spike by the tail and swung him up to the third shelf. Unfortunately, without the scales to protect him, Twilight's teeth cut into his tail and caused a small wound and started to bleed. Ouch! He cried out as he clung to the third shelf of the bookcase. Oh my gosh, Spike! I'm so sorry! Are you alright? Purple Dragon reached up and grabbed the book before jumping down to Twilight's bed. Yeah, I'm fine. It hurt, it hurt at first, but I think it's okay now, he said as he inspected the damage to his tail. 
There was a small cut near the spade ta tip of his tail, but it didn't look too deep to him. At least I got the book. Got your book. Spike handed the book to her and grabbed a small basket from the corner. Are you going out? She asked him. When I was at Fluttershy's this morning, she told me Zakora was coming over to help her make a, me make a mess and that should clear up any pony pox. She said it would be done tonight, so I'm going to, going, I'm going to go pick it up and save Fluttershy the trip, he said. You know how she is about traveling alone in the dark. Yes, I know. She tries, but one of these days she's going to have to get over her fear of the dark. <clears throat> Twilight said. You gotta admit, though, she's come a long way since we moved to town five years ago, Spike said. Yeah, she has. I appreciate you putting forth the extra effort right now, Spike. I'm sorry I'm too sick to help out around here, Twilight said. You really are my number one assistant. Aw, oh, you'd do the same for me if I were sick. Will you be okay while I'm gone? Spike asked, concerned. I'll be fine. I have my book, and if I get tired, I can just lie down and go back to sleep. If she's not busy, have Flourish I take a look at that cut. I wouldn't want you to get any infection. Will do, and I'll clean up the, this mess as soon as I get back, Spike said as he walked out the door. Night had already fallen in Ponyville, and many of the shops in town were already closed up for the night. Fluttershy had been worried about Twilight ever since she became sick and Spike knew. No matter how late it got, Fluttershy would stay up working hard on Twilight's cure. The young dragon was pass passing between the fountain and town hall when he started to feel a little strange. Spike felt himself growing dizzy and used to use the edge of the founder's fountain fountain to prop himself up. He bent he bent double as a sharp stabbing he bent double as a sharp stabbing pain shot through his stomach. Full harvest moon rose above the horizon, flooding the entire town with moonlight. As soon as the light touched Spike, he felt incredibly weak. His body convulsed and he threw up the small snack he had eaten earlier. Falling to the ground he clutched his stomach as another wave of pain coursed through him. The basket he was carrying rolled off along with a few skills disturbed by a low wind. For a moment he thought he may have caught Twilight's illness, but that was impossible since he wasn't a pony. Spike's face contorted in pain. Everything hurt. His head felt like it was going to explode and every bone in his body felt like it was breaking. His muscles burned and his joints ached. Spike was in absolute agony. He believed his body was being torn apart and just when the pain had become too much to bear, he screamed and exploded in a puff of purple smoke and scales. Spike slowly opened his eyes and saw Pinkie Pie standing over him. Are you okay? She asked, her brilliant blue eyes radiant concern. Is that you, Pinky? Spike asked. He looked at her through still blurry eyes. For a minute, all, the, all he could see was a pink blob, but as they began clear, he could see her more clearly. Pinky was not a pony one could call svelte. She was pleasantly plump, but not overly so. Spike had heard stallions around town say she had curves all around the right, all around, in the, oh, all around in the right places. Her mane and tail was almost always curly and bouncy, like pink cotton candy. At the moment, however, she had a confused expression on her face. What happened? Wait, what happened? Do I know you? She asked. The pink pony gasped in realization. Are you new to Ponyville? You have to be new, because I know all the ponies that live here, and I've never seen you before. And if I've never seen you before, then that means you're new. And if you're new, then you probably don't have friends in town. Yet, unless you already know a pony that lives here, do you know anyone who lives here, right? Y yet? Pinky, it's me, Spike, he said, trying to stand up. Tr to, trying to st st standing up? Trying to stand up. Is Spike your name? We have a baby dragon named Spike that lives in town. And my friend Twilight, have you met Spike and Twilight? I just know, know they like to like you because I like you and I just met you Pinky said bouncing around him in a circle what are you talking about Pinky it's me Spike you know the purple dragon breathes fire any of that ring ringing bells you can't be the same Spike that lives here he's a cute little bitsy baby dragon you're cute but definitely not a dragon she said I think you've been eating way too much cake again Pinkie Pie of course I'm a dragon Pinky pulled him over to the nearby fountain pointing towards the water reflected in the water was a strong looking purple pony with his coat, while his coat was an intense purple color, his eyes, mane, and tail were all deep emerald green. He had a chiseled jaw line with a strong shin. Poking out from under his top lip, his top lip was two small, sharp-looking fangs set at the front corners of his mouth. His hair looked, looked a little spiky between his ears, but kept but swept down into 
to a flowing mane that draped around his left shoulder and his tail flowed behind him like green silk. See? Not a dragon! Hinky said dis decidedly. Spike was shocked and stumbled back from the fountain. He fell on his rump, looking at his front hooves, trying to put it all together. What? What happened to me? Why am I a pony? I'm supposed to be a dragon, he asked in a panic. Are you sure you're alright? You didn't hit your head or something, did you? She asked. Pinky, how can I convince you that I'm Spike? He said, looking at himself in the fountain again. If you're Spike, then tell me something only Spike would know, she said with a susp suspicious look in her eyes. Remember that time I caught you in Applejack's cider cellar? Spike whispered in her ear. And to this day, Applejack still doesn't know who did it. Don't know who did what? No, oh, no, got out. <laughs> Don't know who did what? Applejack commented in her round corner. As she rounded the corner, the little orange farm pony was a lot like Pinky in respect that she carried more weight in her frame than some ponies. The thin layer of fat she had softened, she had softened her tone, the tone muscular body. Her blonde mane and tail were always kept bound, bound in. Bound at the end of them, bound at the end to keep them from bl blowing wildly while she worked. Pinky jumped at in the into the air in surprise. Applejack, uh, what are you doing? How oh, are you so late? I was coming to check on Twilight. Uh, now what? What don't I know about my apple cellar? Uh oh, uh, I have no idea. Hey, look, something happened to Spike. Nice try, Pinky, but I don't see Spike anywhere. The little orange farm pony said. I'm not joking. I was closing up the store from the night when I heard a weird noise. I came outside and I found Spike like this, she said, try trying her hardest to appear genuine. That's a good one, Pinkie, Pinkie Pie, but all I see here is that this good-looking pony next to, me, next to you, Applejack said, smiling. What's your, <laughs> uh, what's your name, Hansel? I've never seen you around he these parts before. You new to town? Uh, my name's Spike. Why well, ain't that a coincidence? We got a baby dragon that lives in t town here, but by the same name. She looked, leaned close to Spike. You ever get gone apple bucking? She has, fluttering her eyelashes at him. Oh my god. <laughs> Pinky put her left hoof out to her forehead. Abject, this is Spike. Our Spike, she said. Uh, uh, hi, AJ. I know it doesn't sound like me, but yeah, it is me, Spike said, slowly waving a hoof. Applejack jumped back in surprise. Spike, is that really you? Her face, her face freckles and all turned as red as the three apples on her flank. Applejack pulled down the Stetson hat that always seemed, sh seemed sh always seemed shade her to shade her green eyes. Only now it covered her face. Apparently, yeah, he said. The light orange farm pony composed herself quickly. Whoa, hold on. There we go. Composed herself quickly. What happened, to y'all? Sugar cube. The light orange mare ass pulling on her, pulling on his ears, half expecting it to be a costume of some kind. Ow! I don't know. He confessed, wincing at Applejack pulling on his mane. I was just going to Flourish to get medicine for Twilight when I started to feel started feeling bad. Everything started to hurt, and then I guess I passed out. When I woke up, Pinky was here, and I looked like this. That's it. Nothing else happened. She asked, prodding her shoulder with her, with prodding his shoulder with her light orange hoof. Well, I got bit by, bit on my tail by Twilight. It wasn't her fault, though. My skills have been shedding, and she didn't know. She cut me when she swung me up to the bookshelf. I don't know what, what a bite would ha have to do with it, but we best get over to Flush Eyes. She might not know what's going on, Abjack said, looking at the bottom of one of Spike's hooves. Spike took his hoof back and walked back to the fountain. Looking down into the water, he admired the way he looked now. You guys go ahead. I think I'm going to drop in on Rarity. And now that I look like this, I've got a fighting chance with her again. Whoa, there, low boy. First thing you need, need to do is get checked out. Who knows what changing into a pony has done to you, Jack told him. Yeah, you might... Yeah, you might be really sick, and if you're really sick, then something bad might happen. And if something bad happens, then we'd all be really sad. You don't want to make us all sad, do you? Pinky asked. No, I guess not, Spike said a little def defeated. Well, okay then. It's off to Flourish as we go. We can get the others later, the Crito Pony shouted. Spike and Applejack followed. God! 
Pink Fly actually bounced down the road. It sounds like something Applejack would say instead of uh, instead of uh, Pinky when it goes like that. Flushless Cottage. From behind the curtains of Carousel Boutique, Rarity's vibrant blue eyes had been watching the town square. The svelte white... The svelte? Svelte? Svelte, okay. That's a weird word. White unicorn ma mare had heard yelling outside. When she looked out the window, she saw Pinky... Winder... Window. <laughs> she saw Pinky and Applejack talking with a gorgeous purple stallion, his green mane shining in the moonlight. She watched as they walked down a path towards Fluttershy's cottage. Rarity walked away from the window and paced her room tensely. Her expe expertly styled royal purple... Hit... What? A royal purple mane and tail bounced of its own accord every time she moved. Fashionista had a cutie mark of three diamonds on her flanks, on her flanks that suited her will since she incorporated gems into most of her designs. Who is he? She wondered aloud. More importantly, damn! <laughs> <clears throat> More importantly, why wouldn't they introduce him to me? It's not like pink... I think I had taken interest in anything but cupcakes and parties. But then she's a mare. I suppose even she has needs. Knowing Applejack, she'll try to get him to work on her farm. I can't let a stallion that looks as fabulous as him sort of himself by bucking, ap by bucking trees. Whatever the reason, I'm getting to the bottom of this. Ready to grab a black <laughs> cloak embla emblazoned with the same three diamond design on the kitty mark as the kitty mark on her flank. Wrapping herself in the cloak, she left the carousel boutique and set out into the night. The white unicorn galloped after Applejack and Pinkie Pie, but was careful not to be seen. As soon as they came into view, she began to trail them, darting from bush to bu bush to tree. Rarity could see the hem of her cloak getting dirty from the, the off-road travel, but it was more important for her to stay out of the sight of the others. Fluttershy's cottage was quaint and simple. With a heavily moss-covered roof, it appeared that the home of the Yellow Pegasus had been carved on the side of a hill rather than constructed on top of it. Birdhouses were perched and built into every nook and cranny that would support one. <sighs> support one. Under the bridge that led that up to her home was a den for river otters. Everything that about uh, about shy peg the shy <laughs> everything about the shy pegasus home was centered around the multitude of small forest animals that frequented her <laughs> frequented frequented her cottage and even though her cutie mark was three butterflies she had no particular favorite animal other than her pet bunny angel inside the home was simple nothing overly fancy or outlandish shy pony's residence reflected her personality reserved her li reserved her living room was compromised of a so comprised of a sofa small table and a bookcase holding books on animal care a single throw rug sat in the middle of the wooden floor Flesh Eye was not one of the unnecessary one for unnecessary furniture. She preferred to keep her home as open as possible for her animal friends. Around the inside of her home, like the outside, birdhouses and other homes of various animals could be found hanging from the exposed rafters or built directly into the cottage's structure. The kitchen of the small house, much like the rest of the home, was mostly empty except for the necessary cooking impl eh, implements to prepare some meals. This evening in particular, Fluttershy's kitchen was being used for something more for more than preparing a simple meal. Zakora, the town's local zebra apothecary, and Fluttershy was just were just putting the finishing touches in a cure for Twilight's pony box. The yellow Pegasi is norm normally shy, quite eh, quiet personality was temporarily suppressed while, while helping Zakora make medicine for one of her best friends. She was used to making medicine for the animals she looked after, but making medicine for a pony was new. Thank you very much, Zakora. I don't know how I could have made this medicine without you, Flush I said. Her bouncy pink mane fluttered beside her as she rushed to get a bottle to store the medicine. And even though her mane always seemed to cover one of her deep blue eyes, she always she didn't appear to have any problem seeing where she was going. It's not a problem, me, as you well know. It's off the twilights. I must go. The chorus said as her sing-song way. The black and white striped zebra pony started walking towards the door. Her ample frame disguised her nimbleness and agility as she had been found one on more than one occasion meditating while standing on her head atop a thin staff. Oh, thank you, but I could I couldn't possibly ask you to do more. I can take it to her, even though it's really dark out there, I can do it. 
before Zakora could protest, there was a loud knock at the door. Flush I walked over and opened the door, and found herself nose to nose with a purple pony she had never seen before. Frightened by the sudden contact, she slammed the door in it. <laughs> slammed the door in his face. There was another knock at the door, and Flush I opened it slowly to find the purple stallion sitting there rubbing his nose with a hoof. She looked into his emerald eyes and couldn't help but blush and hide her face behind her pink mane. Oh, um, I'm sorry. Are you okay? Are you lost? Is there anything I can do for you? She asked, her voice barely above a whisper. Applejack and Pinky poked their he heads out from behind Spike. Mm. Flush out, we need your help. Spike here's been tur turned into pony, and I'm pretty sure Twilight's gonna need that medicine y'all been brewing up pretty soon. Applejack said as they walked by her into the cottage. Yeah, and if she d doesn't get it soon, she's gonna get all itchy, and there's nothing worse than being itchy and not being able to re but yeah, be able to scratch. Pinkie Pie said, and she scratched her flank against the side of the fireplace in the living room. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Sakura placed the medicine in her satchel and walked towards the door. Stay here and help your friends. Twilight House is around the bend. I'll get there fast, and you will see. She'll soon be healthy as she can be. Excusing herself, she left the cottage and galloped down the road and into the town. Rarity saw the zebra, zebra gallop down the road, but quit quickly turned her attention to the task at hoof, finding a window where she could look in on her friends and the mysterious new stallion. Spike? Uh, how can this be? How can this be Spike? Flush I asked in disbelief. Trust us, it's him. Jack and Pinky said in unison. Spike filled her in on what happened while Fluttershy sat patiently taking it all in. Are you sure that's everything? Fluttershy asked him. Spike nodded. I've never heard about anything like this before. Animals don't change into other animals. Have you asked Twilight? Well, Twilight's been really sick and I didn't want to bother her. I was coming here anyway to get her medicine. While listening, Flush, while listening, Flush, I noticed a hooded figure looking in her window and screamed, F right. What is it, Flush? I? Spike asked, worried. There, there was some pony at the window, she asked. The other three looked at in the direction she was pointing to find a window with nothing in it but a view of the small stream in front of her house. You sure you... You saw some of the sugar cube? Applejack asked. Yes, I'm sure of it, she confirmed. Pinky was already out the door and in the bushes around the house. Without warning, she popped up next to the white unicorn. Hi, Rarity! What's with the hood? Pinky, don't sca scare me like that, she shouted. Why are you sneaking around in the bushes? Come inside, there's somebody I want you to meet. The two ponies walked into the cottage. Rarity hung up her cloak before addressing the others. Hello, all. And what, are, what are we doing? What are we up to this evening? She said, slowly walking towards Spike. Uh, Rarity, Applejack interrupted. Is this the pony you wanted to introduce to me, Pinky? She asked. More importantly, I'm wondering why you didn't introduce this marvelous hunk of a pony to me earlier when you were talking next to the Founder's Fountain. But Rarity, Pinky said, trying to get a word in, I don't blame you wanting to keep him all, for you, all to yourself. You, who wouldn't? You could have at least brought him by to say hello, Rarity said, fluttering her eyelashes, her nose almost touching his. Spike was blushing so hard, his purple coat was turning red. A silly grin on his face. Never before had Rarity shown as much interest in him. But, Rarity, this is Spike. We're trying to figure out how he got turned into a pony, Flush I informed her. Rarity laughed. Oh, you must be joking. How could this amazing specimen of pony be the lovesick little reptile? Spike couldn't believe it, his new pony ears. Rarity! Object shouted, "That's that's no what, no way to talk to Spike. He's done so much for you. You should be nicer to him." Rarity waved her off with her hoof. "Spike's just a friend, but more like an acquaintance. Truth be told, he's just a silly little dragon with a crush." She told the purple stallion, "Oh, don't get me wrong. He's ex excellent when it comes to li lift and tote work. Well, when just about any type of manual labor needs to be done, that's reason enough to keep him around." But honestly, having the little dragon follow me around all day doesn't does get sort of bothersome. I'd really wish he'd understand that I'm not interested in him that way. He is obviously interested in me. Not that I can really blame him, she said. Besides, that would, what would ponies say if they thought I was romantically involved with a dragon of all things? You can understand that, can't you? she asked the purple stallion. Why, I'd be ruined. My dreams of 
being the greatest fashionista in Equestria would go up in prov proverbial flames. No, it cannot... It simply cannot be, and I wish he'd realize that sooner rather than later. The sound of Spike's heart shattered was almost audible. He was devastated. Is this how Rarity really feels about me? He thought to himself. Spike could feel a pain in his chest growing with every moment. The former little dragon could not help the tears blowing up in his emerald eyes. Rarity saw the expression on the pony's face. Darling, are you okay? Whatever's the matter? Trying to keep himself from crying, Spike ran out of the cottage as fast as he could towards the town, not really caring where he, he needed to go. Nice job, Rarity. Jack reprimanded her. What are you talking about? Pinky, you agree with me, right? Right, Pinky? Pink was already gone, chasing after Spike. Where did she go? She probably ran after him. She probably ran after him, but I don't know if she's gonna be able to catch up with Spike. He's pretty fast as a pony. Abjack said, scowling at Rarity before leaving the cottage to chase after Pinky and Spike. But I don't understand. Rarity turned to where Fletcher was standing and received a slap across the Ooh! Ooh! You got slaps! <laughs> how how could you? The slap didn't hurt, but the point was driven home. What did hurt was tearful. The tearful look she got from Fleshy before she ran out the door after Applejack. Oh my dear Celestia, it was Spike. She to herself. I know Applejack and Pinky were prone to having a good joke at some point expense, but Fleshy would never. Rarity felt her cheek where Fleshy had struck her. What have I done? Rarity ran, ran out of the cottage, tears streaming from her eyes. Oh, Spike, I didn't really mean it. What's wrong with me? Why did I say those things? She chastised herself. Spike would indeed outrun them, even Applejack. Many times she considered going back to the library, but with Twilight being sick, he didn't want to cause her any problems. Mile after mile passed, and he found himself in the outskirts of Camelot. Spike was tired, but didn't feel like stopping at the moment. He walked a familiar route through the city, almost almost on automatic. He didn't stop until he found himself at the overlook where he and Twilight used to stargaze. Spike collapsed from near exhaustion. Tears coursed down his cheek. Unable to, <laughs> unable and unwilling to stop weeping, Spike cried out the pain in his broken heart. Lost. Ah! <laughs> Lost in his remorse and knows a shadow had fallen over him. Hello, Spike. <laughs> Who's there? He said, breathing rapidly. A tall, slender, dark purple alicorn. Dark purple. Dark purple! Why? That's blue! She's like a dark navy blue or something like that. I do fun! Tall, slender, dark purple alicorn stepped out of the shadows. Her almost translucent blue violet <laughs> mane fluttered and waved in the non existent wind. The black crown atop her head was almost hidden in her mane, but her gilded silver shoes shone brightly in the moonlight. Princess Luna! How do you know who I really am? Luna smiled down at him. Oh, Spike, she said comfort. Just like my sister knows about most things that go on beneath the sun in our kingdom, I see quite a bit of what happens under the moon. Luna placed a hoof on his shoulder. Everything that happen happening right now must be terribly confusing. But come, you must be tired. Luna beckoned him to follow her back to the, to the palace. Spike struggled a bit to get to his hooves, but... Princess Luna leaned against him and allowed Spike to stabilize it. What? Oh, hold on. Is this going where I think it's going? Fuck it, I'm gonna read. Spike to stabilize himself. Are you okay to walk, Spike? Spike was had walked to the edge of that outlook. Hundreds of hooves below him was a valley floor. Looking down, he could almost make out the road that winds through the whitetail woods. After all I've done, all I've given wasn't enough. It was never going to be enough. Spike, Princess Luna asked, unfolding her wings. A small rock that tipped over the edge. Spike watched as it fell into the open space. It would be so easy, wouldn't it? Spike said to no point in particular. The tears had sprung anew from the purple stallion's eyes, each drop falling over the edge into oblivion. What's the point anymore? She doesn't love me. She doesn't even like me. She never did. It would be better to just Spike, come talk with me, please, she asked. Please, Spike. The purple earth pony looked back at the princess and saw the concern and worry written in her face. 
Slowly, he turned around and stepped away from the edge. I'll be fine, Princess, Spike said as he fell to the ground, worn out and exhausted. 